Hello everybody, and before today's video, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Tee Public because Teespring has been having some issues with my shirts where they have not been telling me about sales that have been going on that I know have been going on because people have told me they bought the shirt and they've been showing me the purchases that they've made, but it hasn't been showing up on my end. And so I don't know what's going on there. I'm still trying to get back with them. But in the meantime, I went ahead and started a store over on Tee Public because I've kind of want to diversify anyway. And right now there's actually a really good sale going on, on the website for the next 36 hours. You have $13 t-shirts there, $13 t-shirts. You can get an Odin's movie blog t-shirt for $13. You can also get a hoodie. You can get a kid's t-shirt. You can also get a mug. It also comes with a lot of things like phone cases, laptop cases, magnets, tank tops. They've got pretty much everything in the standard Odin's movie blog logo with my favorite color green. So go ahead and check that out. You got some different phone options here. Most of them are iPhones. You do get some galaxy options as well, but anyway, check out the uh, check out the merchandise I'd appreciate it support the channel check the link in the description all right now for the video hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's movie blog I am the critic who is a cynic hope we're doing well and today we've got some news that broke just after the video I made yesterday went live when talking about the Batman and some of the news surrounding it with mentioning Jonah Hill having left it because apparently he was being eyed for a character such as Penguin. He was more interested in the Riddler, but apparently talks have fallen through, which led to them announcing this, that Paul Dano, or as I like to call him, Paul freaking Dano, is now been cast officially as the Riddler. Now, for those that don't know much about me, and you probably have never heard much m me talk much about Paul Dano on the channel because he hasn't really made a lot of movies recently, but I love this man. I think this man is one of the most talented actors working in Hollywood today. I've been a fan of his for a very, very long time, and yes, I even think that he's good in a little film by Ryan Johnson called Looper. He's a fantastic actor, he's a fantastic character actor, but he's just solid in every single way. So when he was announced as Riddler, I immediately said yes, and it's interesting because I remember in the video I said yesterday, I said, I don't want Jonah Hill to be cast as Riddler or as any of the other characters because I just, I didn't see him as being someone that would be able to pull it off in the same way as a Joaquin Phoenix being able to pull off a, uh, a, a Joker or even a Robert Pattinson being able to pull off a Bruce Wayne, where there's a quality that those actors have. There's almost a quirkiness that they have that I think honestly helps them in being able to take a role a little bit more seriously, but also to give a much better performance. Now, that's not a shot at Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill is a very talented actor. If you've never seen him in movies like The Wolf of Wall Street or even uh, Moneyball, you're missing out because he gives some, some fantastic roles in this. But Paul Dano, in my opinion, is a much better choice for this role of the Riddler. And yes, I know there's been some people pointing out that this is not going to be Edward Nigma's Riddler, but it's going to be a different version of the Riddler, which to be honest, I think with everything we know about Matt Reeves' Batman at this point, seems to be very much in line with what they're trying to do. It doesn't sound like, to me, they're trying to create another franchise. It seems to me like the Batman is going to be very similar to Joker, where it's going to be taken a little bit more seriously, it's going to be a little bit of a darker tone to it, it's going to be more realistic, more gritty, which is, I think, exactly what a lot of fans are being drawn to. That's the reason why I think so many people wanted to see Joker was because of just how well-made it was, how well-crafted it was. It was not just this cookie-cutter nonsense that we've been getting from a lot of superhero films lately, both DC and Marvel, but is something a little bit different. And I think that this film, Batman, is also going to be able to go into that same line. And having someone like a Paul Dano as one of your main villains, or if not the main villain, I think is a great way to bring that about. So Paul Dano has been in tremendous, he's been in some incredible movies. Some of my all-time favorite roles of his as far as lead roles go. He was amazing in a little film called Swiss Army Man, which also features Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe plays a dead corpse, that's right, a dead corpse that apparently can be used for a wide variety of things. Literally, he is a Swiss Army Man. It is one of the weirdest, <laughs> funniest films I've ever seen. Paul Dano gives an incredible performance of a man down on his luck, finding hope when it seems to be hopeless, and it's fantastic. He was also really great in a <laughs> in a movie called 12 Years a Slave, where he plays a despicable character, but is able just to play it with such conviction that you buy into it. And of course, uh, Ruby Sparks might be one of my all-time favorite roles of his, because I love that movie so much. I'm a, I'm a sucker for rom-coms, and I definitely can connect to the way that he was feeling at that point in his life, having felt like that at my point at various points in my life as well. So anyway, some other movies that he's been in, Love and Mercy, he was fantastic in. He was, for those that have never seen There Will Be Blood, he is the one uh, that plays Paul Sunday, Eli Sunday. He is the one that, <laughs> that, oh man, basically this. And this is the reason why I love this movie too, because Daniel Day-Lewis gives an incredible performance, but he's the one that t is... <laughs> I'm, I'm slipping over my words here. But anyway, he's the one that tells him, You, I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. 
So Paul <laughs> Paul Dano is the kid that is being talked to, or the uh, the kind of like the leader of the community that uh, Daniel Day Lewis's character goes to in that. So if you've ever seen that movie, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Little Miss Sunshine, dude. This this guy has been in so many great films. And he does his job so well. And I, again, I can't speak highly enough of this guy. I mean, he was also in Prisoners. He plays a great, creepy character in Prisoners. And even going all the way back to films like Emperor's Club in 2002, where he's playing, as a kid actor, he's playing a role. This dude has done it. His dude has done a lot. And I think that he is a welcome addition to this universe. Please let me know in the comment section if you've ever heard of Paul Dano. And if you've never heard of him, please look at his resume. Go to IMDb. Check out some of his movies. Check out the ones that I've mentioned before. Obviously, I think you can skip Looper because screw Ryan Johnson. But in all honesty, every film that this dude touches, he, he at the very least, is a great character. And he always gives his all. He always gives everything he can to every performance he does. And I think that's the reason why he is one of my favorite actors currently working in Hollywood. And I know that it might sound like I say that a lot. It might sound like I, I like a lot of actors right now. But if I had to choose right now two of my all-time favorite actors currently still working in Hollywood, it would probably be Jake Gyllenhaal and Paul Dano. I mean, obviously, I can think of other people that I like. For example, Leonardo DiCaprio. But obviously, Leonardo DiCaprio, to me, sometimes speaks a little bit too much. Um, and there's other actors, too, that I, I could definitely say, say that I have a lot of appreciation for. But Paul Dano and, and as I mentioned before, Jake Gyllenhaal are really some of my all-time favorites because I love the work they do. I also love the projects that they do choose and it's very rare that you have an actor actor in Hollywood these days that picks movies where there aren't really a whole lot of bad movies there really isn't any bad movies in the bunch I mean even going to Jake Gyllenhaal and you you would point out films like Bubble Boy even Bubble Boy has this quirky charm to it that you really just can't deny Paul Dano is in the same way where you go to every single movie he's done and even movies like Okja which I think there's a lot of problems with. The role that he plays in the film is truly fantastic. I haven't seen any of his TV work. However, him being cast here as Edward Nashton, so not Edward Nigma, but Edward Nashton as the Riddler is very, very exciting. I think he's going to be, I think he's going to knock the role out of the park. And I think that he's going to hopefully bring in even more people to the understanding of why he is one of my all time favorite actors. Um, currently working in Hollywood still to this day, but also why I call the dude Paul freaking Dano. I remember being back in college and talking about this guy. I was in, I had a, me and my friends, we had a podcast that we did for, for a little while. And I remember bringing this dude up in our conversations because of how much I appreciated his movies. And I would always, always call him by the proper name, Paul freaking Dano, because that's exactly the name that he deserves. But anyway, as you can see here, Matt Reeves, Batman is indeed going to be bringing this guy on to be the classic villain. And it was announced on Thursday yesterday. Dano's version of the character will be named Edward Nashton, the man who in the comics later goes by the name Edward Nigma and adopts the villainous persona. So that's actually good to know. As I said, I like to do these things live. So it's good to know that yes, he's going by Edward Nashton, but according to Hollywood reporter, this is the person that will become Edward Nigma. I assume that Edward Nigma was a co name and obviously I don't really know a whole lot about the comics as I've mentioned before I'm not a comics guy I am much more of a film TV personality when it comes to my uh, knowledge of these things and so I've learned most of this from Batman the Animated Series, which has been a very long time since I've seen that series, and of course also from all the different films that we've had over the past several years. So it's good to know that they are indeed actually keeping him. So I'm correcting myself from before. They are actually keeping him on as being Edward Nigma, but he becomes Edward Nigma with his actual name being Edward Nashton beforehand, which is just really great. Now the big question I think a lot of people are asking is, will he be able to match up with Jim Carrey's version of the character? Now some people love that version, like me. Other people are rightly critical of that version because it might seem more like a different type of character. It might be more in line with a Joker-esque personality to it, but to be perfectly honest, I, I think that it's a great performance by Jim Carrey. It's one of the few uh, great performances that I can still look back on in Jim Carrey's, uh, Jim, Car Jim, Carrey, Jim Carrey's career and still have a smile on my face by all the lines and the, his line delivery and everything he does. Caffeine will kill you, among many other great lines from that quirky, terrible, but still amazing film, Batman Forever. So obviously I think that if anyone could outdo that performance, if anyone could bring a new level to it, it would be Paul freaking Dano. And I think he's going to knock it out of the park. And also just talk a little bit about the other casting that happened recently of Zoe Kravitz to be Catwoman. To be honest, I, I'm that one I'm less excited for. And it's not because of any political reason or any personal reason other than just, I don't think that she's a very talented actress and that's not a personal swipe. It's just that anything that I've seen her in, I can't remember her performance in those movies again I I remember her I'm trying to see I can't even remember what movies she was in to be perfectly honest so let me try and see here what movie she was in that I would have seen so she was Spider-Verse which again voice work it's really hard to tell uh Lita Lestrange yeah she was awful because that movie was terrible 
and she just wasn't very good in that film. I'm trying to see anything else that she's been in that I could point to. Uh, that's right. She was in the Allegiant Divergent series, which was a terrible series. She was very minor character in Mad Max Fury Road, so that's kind of hard to say one way or the other. She was in X-Men First Class, but again, it's a forgettable performance overall. So I'm, I'm just looking through her. I'm just looking through her resume and... I, I just don't really see her as being a, a good actress. And I think that some of you might say, yeah, but she doesn't have to be a good actress because she's playing a comic character. But that to me is what is new about this new iteration of movies coming out of DC is that it seems that their main focus is on making the best movie possible, which includes writing, direction, acting, especially. And I mean, look at Joker. It's an acting showcase. And based on the fact you have Robert Pattinson and also Paul Dano, Paul freaking Dano as a part of this, I think that 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 those two guys are in such a different caliber or in such a different league than someone like a Zoe Kravitz, who let's be honest is only famous and only got involved in the movies because of her parents. I mean, again, let's just be honest here. And so I think that she really just doesn't fit in very well. I don't think she fits in. And for all I know, she could be great in some of the TV series that she'd be doing, but I don't really watch TV. So, um, or I don't watch a lot of TV series, especially the ones that are on Showtime or HBO, which she seems to be a part of. So high fidelity TV series, Big Little Lies. Again, these are series that I, I just have no reference in. But again, we can all agree she got famous because, or she got at least involved in movies because of her family. And I think that's something that we always need to take into account. Doesn't mean that she can't be good or doesn't mean that she can't learn the trade and learn the craft and become a re very well-talented actress working around other great actors and actresses in Hollywood. But I think that just in all honesty, that the caliber of actor that they're bringing onto this movie, and I would even add Jonah Hill to that discussion. I think that they are in a much different league than what Zoe Kravitz is able to bring to the table. I could be wrong on that. Again, for all I know, she could be doing groundbreaking work in television, but I just have no frame of reference for that. And so that's all I can say about it in my own personal opinion. But anyway, no, let me know your thoughts about this. What are your thoughts about Zoe Kravitz? What are your thoughts about Paul freaking Dano? That's the one I care more about because... The dude's awesome, and I'm sure there's going to be some people saying, have you seen what he said? Have you seen his politics, etc.? Which I, I really don't care about because I don't really ever hear about him because he's a relative unknown, right? Even though he's been in some really big movies, and I'm sure there's a lot of people like me that love the dude, um, he is much less known, I would say, than a Robert Pattinson who obviously had movies like Twilight to get his name out there, or even Zoe Kravitz because of the name recognition that she has. So let me know your thoughts about uh, this casting, and let me know your thoughts about Paul freaking Dano, and please... Watch some of Paul freaking Dano's work. I really, honestly, to be honest, want to have a Paul Dano collection of movies because that's how great I think he is as an actor. So far, I only have a couple. I have Love and Mercy, which is a really solid film, solid performance from him. There's other films like Prisoners that I still need to get and a couple others that are just fantastic. Probably won't get Looper, though, because, you know, again, screw Ryan Johnson. But anyway, let me thoughts about this and all the things we talked about in the comment section below. But like this video, smash that like button. Give us a subscribe. It helps us out a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.